Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar on the power of realistic rendering in the contract furniture industry. I'm really happy to be your host today. I'm Chris Belfontaine, Marketing Director for KISP, and joining me is a special guest from our rendering team, Harini Sierra. Welcome, Harini. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, Chris. Happy to be here. So before we dive in, let's ask you, Harini, could you briefly tell us a little bit about KISP and your experience with visualizations in this industry? Yes, um, I'm from Dominican Republic and their contract furniture is just related to a bulky desk, uh, metal fields for documents and all this stuff. But when I started working with KISP, I realized that it's a whole new world in the contract furniture industry. It's not just the furniture, it is the feel of the furniture how the furniture look like in the office spaces, the ergonomy of the furniture, the color palettes. It was a new discovery for me when I started working on KISP on the rendering team. And the fact that there, every little details, it think about it very consciously, blown me my mind away. And um, I'm very happy to be involved in this industry in this way, because it is important to recognize that furniture is just a piece of furniture on a space. It's something that is related to your life and the way you live. So um, I'm glad to be part of this industry, absolutely. Yeah, and you know what I've found since I joined is really understanding the impact of the experts in the rendering team on you know how we can boost sales and really bring solutions to life. So that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about today is really the power of visual selling. So visualization has always been really important to contract furniture, but it seems like it's becoming even more critical than ever. Do you find that as well with the clients you're working with? Yeah, uh, clients right now are a pretty much tech savvy. They do some research before jumping into a project in, in, in our industry. They are pretty conscious about what they want and how they want it. So um, for their, the visual of the product is important, how the lining affect the product, how they think the client will see it because they will help them to help the client to make a decision faster. And with all of this knowledge, they're kind of um, a little bit challenging for us because they know what they're talking. So that's why visual renderings are important for our client, for the end user at as well. Um, they would like to see how this piece of furniture will look like in the space. So they have pretty knowledge on how they will look like or how this, this piece of furniture will look like. So um, I think it's important that they are pretty conscious about it and they research about it and know exactly what they need. So yeah, it is a deal breaker right now using visuals for sales, absolutely. Yeah, and I really think that what we're seeing um, more than just presenting the solutions in these beautiful renderings is really that it's about responding to clients with a really personal recommendation, customizing yeah. it for their space, all those kinds of things. How can I put this into words? They are pretty um, straightforward what they want, how they want it, because they have an idea and they would like us to present this idea exactly as they need it. They do take recommendation because they know that we are the experts, but they always overseeing everything that we do to make sure that the final product is as they need it and as they want it. Let's look deeper into the actual process. So, Harney, could you share some practical tips that our audience today, which is probably mostly dealers and manufacturers, how can they um, you know, implement systems that get them to the best quality renderings when working with a team like yours? Yeah, for us, the most important assets will be the 3D symbols of the products they would like us to present in the renderings. This is the most important assets because it is the product that, that we need to put in the renders. Um, today, the software that most of the client manufacturers are using, the quality of the 3D symbol is not that good, but we rely on clients that have access to engineering files that have all of the details and will save us time into remodeling the product, for instance. If not a problem for us, but we need to make the product look good on the render. So for me, um, the most important access to get will be the 3D files of the product. Then information about um, 
how the client would like to present the product. For instance, on a white background rendering, it's all about the product. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the best sample for the fabric, the best sample for the wood or the laminate or whatever elements this product should have, we should get the best samples. And when I say samples, it is a pretty good quality image of the fabric, of the laminate, of the wood, of whatever. They can give us the information about the manufacturer and we can look it out um, on a website and get the best sample, for instance. And then on the environmental side, as much information they can give us about the look and feel of the, the space, the better. Sometimes clients for the speedy of the process and they need to get things done for yesterday, they oversee that as much information that we can get, the better. They don't need to give us, I don't know, the architectural presentations for um, the bid, but at least give us a mood board on how they would like to mm -hmm. present the product. You know, um, I would like what they would like to see outside of a window, what they would like to see on a carpet, how the lining should look, feel more warmth, more cold. That information give us a lot to us to start with. And then when we start sending previews, the process will be faster because we have the general idea in the first round of previews. So I think there are the two things that I think are the most important, the 3D symbols, a pretty good shape 3D symbols and information about how to present the product in the space. Yeah. And, you know, I know everyone in the industry is always under so much time pressure, but really a little bit of investing that time up front makes such a big difference for the outcome. And frankly, in the end, usually ends up saving us time. Yeah, absolutely. And again, as I said before, in the first round of previews, you will get pretty much 60, 70 percent of the job done if you take the time to gather mm -hmm. all the information that you have for the project and send it over up front to us. So once you have those assets, what's the next step in sort of bringing the environment to life? Um, I need to say that the attention of details will bring this to life. Um, the lining affect directly how the product should look like and the ambience of the lining is important. Um, again, the elements that we use, fabrics, um, laminates, woods, and um, the angle of the camera is all mm -hmm. important. Sometimes clients will like to see uh, the product from a specific angle camera, and it takes away some of the actual point of the focal point of the product, and they will be hesitant to let that go. Um, but yeah, I think will be, um, the lining, uh, the material to be applied, um, and the camera angle, I believe. And our team is pretty detail oriented, so they will take the time to make the product look good, make sure that the lining is hitting correctly, and there is no anything obstructing the focal point of the product. And I, I think that that will be the, the, the key elements to bring um, a rendering into life. Absolutely. What would you say are the things that, you know, can go wrong in a project, you know, in the interest of everybody probably trying to get their things as quickly as possible? Um, what are some things that we can help them avoid so that, you know, the renderings come out exactly how they're hoping for? Again, lack of information. Yeah. If we don't get enough information at the beginning of the process, at the end, it will be something that might go wrong. I understand that sometimes um, clients' decisions shift during the process. And this is something that we can easily do within the process. That won't be a problem. But for, for some reasons, we have some um, situations where uh, we start working with a 2D floor plan and there's no way that we can get the overall look of the space. And almost at the end, someone found a PDF with information about the architectural elements of the environment. It, all of a sudden, we need to change everything because this is the actual space where the furniture will be putting in. Mm -hmm. So we need to change sometimes everything. 
if we have the time and the resources, we will do it because what we want to do is make our client happy, help them win the bid or the RFP. If not, we will recommend maybe um, change colors to make it look as close as possible because we running out of time and we need to present for them to present on time. So I think the common misconception, it is not to giving enough information to a rendering studio. Hmm. Even though um, I understand that sometimes there are pages with, I don't know, documents with 60 pages of information and you think we don't need that. But if you take the time, as I was said at the beginning, if you take the time to gather those information and make sure that we have everything needed, I think the process will be smooth and quicker as possible. Yeah, and you know we're going to talk a little bit later about choosing the right service provider, but I think that's honestly one of the big differences at Kesbright is that we have a team who can work with you to achieve the desired results yeah. or let you know if there is something happening as opposed to maybe a more automated service where frankly lots of times people don't ever get to talk to a human right we have real people yeah. who are there to guide our our clients for sure absolutely so we've been focusing a little bit up to now on you know kind of the static renderings um but I wanted to also touch, you know, because we talk a lot about always looking for what's next. So I yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about the future of visualization specifically for contract furniture and, you know, bit of a bit of a spoiler alert here, but clearly we're going to be talking <laughs> a little bit about virtual reality based on this slide. But I, <laughs> yeah. you know, I know that's something the team's been doing a lot of too. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, virtual reality and augmented reality will be in the conversation for the next couple of years. And every time is our team is getting better and better working on virtual reality. reality. And I have to say as well, um, we are using now Unreal Engine to make the experience more interactive with the clients where they will be able to switch finishes within a VR experience using a VR of goggles and, and joysticks like a video game. I think this is the next things for us and for the whole um, commercial furniture industry. It's not just um, give them the, the immersive experience, but we are thinking of give them the power to change things and see it in real life and real time, sorry. So I think the future will be, we will keep talking about VR and augmented reality, but in our case, we will be bringing more interactions with the products mm -hmm. within those virtual reality experiences using Unreal Engine. So one of the ways I've seen some of our early adopters using virtual reality already is, um, yeah. it's an, there's an example on the left side of the screen here, but is in a virtual showroom, right? So being able to put all of your products in a place that you can't do as well in in a physical way. So, you know, it's it, what you're talking about with Unreal is really about taking something like this and then making it even more engaging because those virtual showrooms can be great sales tools, right? People can come and investigate the products. You can incorporate tools like live chat so that people can reach out directly to sales right from, from this. Yes. And it also expands um, the geography from which we can pull clients, right? Somebody who might not be able to physically come visit a showroom can visit your online showroom with VR 24 seven. Right. Yeah. I think this, uh, as, as you mentioned, is, is an excellent sales tool that it is easy to change. Think about if you need to change a whole floor plan of a physical showroom, how many, how much time you need to invest to have a group of people changing furniture. With virtual showroom, you will be able just to send the 3D symbols of the set of furniture you need to change, apply the new color palette or the new finishes that you would like to present and switch out the 360 degree view and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that will take you, I don't know, 24 to 48 hours uh, on a physical showroom, maybe you need a week with the showroom closed or that area closed because you are changing furniture, you're changing lining, you're changing, I don't know, a wall color or whatever. With a mm -hmm. virtual showroom, you can have that done within 48 to 72 hours, being pretty um, far away from a uh, timeline. But yeah, I, I think this is an excellent sales tool. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but using the Julio app that which is um the the app that we use to deliver mm -hmm. those um experiences you'll be able to get data as well on what 
draw the most attention to the people with the heat map and you will be counting how many visits you, will ha you had on a day. So yeah, it is a pretty powerful sales tool that everyone should be using. The other one, just before we move on, you mentioned at the start, but um, is augmented reality. And where I think that's really interesting um, is, you know, you can use a phone or a tablet or any mobile device to take an AR object that's been created by our team and drop it inside your client's own office. So not only is it a great way to check, you know, how something will look and if it fits, but what I think is really great is a lot of us have sustainability goals in 2024 and forward. And in this industry in particular, we all know there's a ton of waste around things like mock-ups. So although the mock-up's not going to go away, AR should help us reduce it, right? We should yes. be able to, um, you know, if we do a mock-up of a two-pack and we can expand to a whole floor of them with AR, or we can use AR models to narrow down before we do the mock-up so that we're doing fewer of them. And, you know, not only for the for the amount of waste there, but also things, um, you know, wasted logistics and time for shipping and all those things. I think AR is a real game changer for furniture. So if I'm really inspired to do all of these great <laughs> things, right, improve my rendering quality, try a virtual showroom, get some AR going, um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground today on, on how important those things are. But of course, in the end, it's important to choose the right team. So... Yes. What would some of your tips or things that people, our audience should be considering about when they're looking for a team to help them execute their marketing plan? Um, we, are, we humans are pretty visual. So I think the first thing someone needs to do is look for a company that has a great portfolio and have a lot of samples of the services that they provide. I think a great portfolio, uh, is a deal breaker and also um, expertise in the industry. Um, they know what they're talking, they know what they do. So the expertise is important. And for me as well, a team that has good communication is also something to consider. Um, sometimes you send out a project to a specific studio design and you don't hear about them three to four days later maybe our mm -hmm. team is all about communications from day one we can get the project and we ask as many questions as we needed and you'll be able in, you'll be informed through the whole process so i think a good portfolio expertise in the industry and good communications are the key elements you need to look for a partner on visualizations. You know, um, as marketing director, I work on a lot of projects with outside vendors and there's nothing more frustrating mm -hmm. than if I think something is underway and it's being worked on and then I find out, oh, they were missing something small I could have fixed in a few minutes and therefore no work yes. has been done, right? So I know, you know, Harini here is actually kind of uh, the key <laughs> person that if you're reaching out with kids that who will be communicating with you. And I know it's such a priority for the team because it, it makes our lives easier too. So it, of course we prioritize it, but um, yes, absolutely. You know, and another thing that I think we should be, or someone should be looking is for a team that always try to see what's the next things to do, what's new. Um, what a new service that we can provide. And we have a team that do some research and to bring what next to, to make their work life easier in terms of a project process and give you the worry and, and for you to, to present and focus on the sales page while we take care of everything that is heavy on your side. So yeah, I think, uh, a team that investigate and be informed about what are the new trends is also important to consider to choosing a right partner. That's a good point because I know our team has sometimes, you know, offered suggestions to people, you know, they come in thinking they want a certain solution and we say, you know, this would be an amazing candidate for an AR object or whatever it is, or we have that deep expertise and with furniture especially to be able to come in and say, you know, offer consultation or what's next or what's going to really make our clients stand out from from their competition when they're pitching or doing RFPs. So to wrap up, um, let's just revisit some of the, the key takeaways. So I know, you know, it kind of comes down to making sure we have the right things coming in so that we can do our best job going out and communicating 
you know, more than the visual stuff, it sounds like communication yeah. is the key. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, for me, and for all of us at the team, I think if the whole team were, were here with me, would agree with me that um, first, communications. Um, even the craziest idea, let us know. Maybe we'll be able to make that happen or give you a different direction with your big idea in mind. Mm -hmm. um, give us all the assets that you have. Don't worry about too much information. We will find a way to, to get it exactly what we need, but as much information as we get, the better. Um, have a clear idea on how you would like the project to be at the end. Even though we're going to suggest you from our experience and from our expertise, it is good to know that the client know exactly what they need. And even if you don't know, we will guide you out and give you some advice and give you some ideas for you to, to present. But if if you as a client know exactly what you need, it will be a lot easier for us. And um, communication is key. Again, communication is key. Um, we will hear from me <laughs> several times during the whole process, making sure that you're informed for whatever is happening on the project process. And after we deliver the project, we'll be hear from me just to know how the presentation go, to know how you feel with our process. Thank you, Harney, for coming on today and sort of sharing your expertise from the trenches and, and everything. Um, if our audience, thank you for joining us. If you are interested in finding out more, please visit us at kisp.com and we'll share some contact information on where you can get in touch with Harney, even to ask some questions about your next upcoming project. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone.